Oh, good afternoon. We're at the, here my uh, Jackson 6700 Tamper, and uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a different video here today on how to adjust the uh, servo valves. What these uh, servo valves do, they they get an electrical signal in, and uh, they the, the servo valve actuates the uh, hydraulics to the jacking cylinders or to the lining cylinders. This is your lining servo. This is your left hand jacking servo and this is your right hand jacking servo. Um, so I had to replace this left hand servo valve and uh, I got to set the mechanical bias on it first. So what I'll do is I'll have the machine running, the power on, and the jack beam switch up. Okay, you don't have to have the hooks, you don't want the hooks, the jack beam hooks locked. You want them open. And what we're going to do with the power on, we're going to take this electrical plug out right here. I don't need to take it out, but you, you understand what I'm doing. I'm, I've already set the mechanical bias on it, so I don't need to do it over again, but I'm showing you. You take this uh, plug out. Now, back in here, you can see this this one here. This is, uh, you put a one eighth inch Allen in here. And we really like for this to be a, a non-ferrous Allen wrench. Uh, I had a set of beryllium Allen wrenches years back and they grew legs. But uh, anyway, what you want to do, and you turn this very slowly and you never ever turn it over one revolution. Turn it very slowly. Again, this is the lining cil er, cylinder, so uh, but we want to adjust the left jacking cylinder. But I'm just showing this because you can see this right here. This uh, this is a little made a little bit different this servo because actually you got to go back in here. Right in here is your your valve. So the not all servos are made the same. Um, so if you if you take a take there's a plug here. See the plug? I took it off so you could see. And Word to the wise, you're taking these plugs off, use a magnetic screwdriver because I dropped this one down here in the ballast and it's history. So I'm going to have to get another one. You don't want mud doppers in here, especially this one. So this one goes all the way back in and uh, you'll turn it slowly to the right or slowly to the left. And you just want that jack beam to start drifting down very slow. It just starts drifting down very slow. Once you get that started down, stop. Your adjustment's made. Okay? Plug your uh, electrical connector back in, and your jack beam should come back up. So that's how you set the mechanical bias on these uh, servo valves. Uh, that particular valve that I put on here the other day, cost, uh, that's a rebuilt one, it cost $1,300. Uh, brand new one's twenty six hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, Harshko Track Technologies. They they're not afraid to charge. This is the old servo I took out. Um, here's another thing I want to show you. Uh, if you guys are going to put this on when you set it in there, there's uh, four O rings. O rings have to be there. Also, a good idea to change these little. Uh, filters there's two filters there change those filters they go in the they don't go in here they go in the block the manifold block up there uh, if you're having some difficulties and uh, you're getting some irregularities in your uh, jack beam uh, your jacking cylinders or your lining cylinders this is a good place to start these things are wee, wee tiny and they plug up uh, so this is a good place to start diagnosing that. Replace these filters before you uh, do anything. See if that makes a difference. Hold on here. I got a track. You got a green track, Russ. 10 for Dave. Green track. Thank you. Any contractors yeah. on the track? Got a train leaving the, the harbor, harbor headed this way. So. Uh, Oh, I was going to tell you when you when you put this back down here, make sure your O-rings are in. 
put it down, you tighten these four Allen head bolts up. You uh, want to snug it, snug it, snug it, snug it. Then you want to keep on going, just like tightening up tire lugs up. A little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit. Keep going around three or four times, whatever you got to do to make this good and tight. If it's not good and tight and your O-rings aren't in there, you're going to have a lot of leakage on your hydraulics. Okay, so we got our mechanical bias set. Uh, I'm going to take you up here in the cab. And uh, <clears throat> for you guys that don't know, this is, uh, this is your jack left-hand jacking cylinder. That's what that servo is sending the uh, fluid to, to jack track. Um, it's quite a complicated electrical, how it works. But I'm not going to get all into all that today. Maybe someday I will. But this is, uh, this is your jack beam. And this is what clamps the, uh, goes down see the uh, clamp down here uh, it goes down on the rails and then it will that clamp will go in underneath the head and pick the track up to whatever I want it to go up uh, another thing if you're having problems uh, maybe with some irregularities <coughs> excuse me uh, keep this uh, jack beam servo filter changed uh, at the recommended uh, hours. Uh, this is exceedingly difficult to get off. This little cap here, what I found out, I tried with a three quarter uh, inch ratchet and a cheater pipe and I couldn't budge it. Uh, here's a little trick for you guys changing this. Get an impact wrench. And that works really well. It's amazing. Uh, going to cab here, we're going to, uh, another thing, this, uh, use your impact wrench on this charge filter too. It'll be, make a big difference when you're changing them or taking those canisters out. Okay. We got our mechanical bias set. Now we got to set the, uh, the electrical bias. Okay. Um. What we're going to do, start the machine up, put your jack beam down on the rail, and uh, of course you'll have to have the uh, 28 volt power on to do that. Once your jack beam gets down there, you're going to shut your power off, you're going to go over here in your logic system, pull card 10 out. And pull this read relay card 15 out. They're numbered over here. Okay. Pull them out. You're going to turn your power back on. And since we changed the left servo, then we're going to adjust this left bias. So you'll loosen this lock nut up and you'll turn this left bias screw little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, till that jack beam just starts to come up very slowly. Okay, you're done. Now you got your electrical bias set. Turn your power back off, put your cards back in. They're, uh, I just did this, so I got the uh, brackets that hold that off. But there's uh, two brackets that hold that uh, hold all those cards in there. I got to put that back in yet. <clears throat> all right. Now, unfortunately, uh, you got to you got to go back and recalibrate the cross level system and uh, we're not going to do that on this video. Um, that's a that's a pretty involved procedure. Uh, got some help coming here in a couple days to uh, help me calibrate the cross level. And here's the uh, these things go in here like this. Hold those logic cards in place while I'm tamping. I'll put them back on here in a minute. Um, so yeah, I made this a video. It may not interest a lot of people. But um, I, I looked and tried to find on YouTube uh, a video that showed how to 
adjust these uh, servo valves and I could not find one so I um, thought well I'll make one here and you know a lot of the young guys they like to watch YouTube and find information out and there's an awful lot of information on YouTube and I put up a uh, bunch of videos on the on my tamper and I've got a lot more to do but I thought well hey I'll make a video on how to calibrate these uh, jacking servos and maybe that'll make it uh, really easy for somebody in the future okay uh, let me tell you why I changed that servo uh, I've had several servo valves go bad in the past and every time every time a servo valve has gone bad it goes bad right now it doesn't give you the only uh, any indication what happened was I went I was tamping track doing fine and all of a sudden my uh, jack beam grabbed the grabbed the rail and just yanked it just yanked it up out just like that I uh, had a servo valve go bad, a uh, lining servo valve go bad one time, and the same thing happened. I was lining track doing really good, and all of a sudden it just shot to the left, just like that. So if you have that happen, um, you may have a bad servo, or another possibility, you may have a bad receiver. Because these receivers, they go bad really quick also uh, I've had that I've had several of them go back over the years and like I said when they go they go right now they don't give you any warning so watch your jack beam when you're clamping track and be ready to unclamp if something like that happens right away I mean that jack beam when I clamped the track just would not stop so anyway that's why I changed that servo valve I did rebuild this receiver first um, I was having some really strange things happen with my electrical. We swapped uh, the receivers from this side over to here. Um, I did a continuity check on uh, all the pins in here. But uh, and I ran a lot. Um, here's another thing that was going on. It really was wild. You know, my uh, right jack needle, when I was in left grade rail, over here, left grade rail. <coughs> I said when I clamped the track, it just wanted to, the jack beam just wanted to pick the rail up way up, wouldn't stop. This needle here, when I pick track up and the needle's down here, the needle's going to go up, go to green and stop. And that's when you're, that signal sent to the servo valves to shut the hydraulic fluid off. Okay? So no more jacking occurs. Well, that wasn't happening. But the really weird thing was this needle was not going up as the track was being picked up. This needle was going down. So, rot row, Rorge. We got a big problem here. Anyway, I uh, did a lot well, looking for broken wires. Um, I am um, back here in your grade rail switch traced all these a lot of these uh, wires trying to find the, the see if I had continuity um, your 400 your signal wire this wire right here this uh, 419 wire you can see that now well, I don't know if you can see it or not 419 right there that one here um, this one here that one goes down up through the overhead down through here into your uh, cannon plugs down here and then that goes out of the cannon plug into this module card 30 this is your uh, pendulum amplifier mod uh, card and uh, we didn't think the uh, signal was inverting correctly um, so I did put a new uh, card on here card 30 they're real easy. They just pull right out, pull right back in. There's little pins over here to hold them. So anyway, I uh, hope uh, maybe in the future that video will help uh, diagnose some uh, problems for you. I've uh, got several tamper operators that do watch these videos and uh, hope that helped. Um, 
somebody in the future. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Make a comment and I'll try my best to uh, help you get through it. Or... Okay, thank you again for watching. Uh, this is the uh, day before Thanksgiving here, 2020. And it's 60 degrees. And it's pretty nice. And this is railroad. Cumberland Mine Railroad. Okay. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy your turkey and your family. And we'll make... Oh, one more thing I got to tell you. Uh, I didn't tell you how to set the, uh, the mechanical and bias on the uh, lining servo. Uh, I'm going to have to make another video on that sometime in the future because this is getting kind of long here. Okay. But uh, I will do that sometime in the future. So now, anyway, we're out. Have a good one.